this is really going to be about. This is, in a sense, it's a case study, but not a serious case study the way several of the other talks have been, like the one that was just in here. This is much more of a, hey, I like to use a lot of different technologies, and I don't just like learning them in a vacuum. I like to string them all together to actually accomplish some purpose, even if it's a silly purpose, you know. So I wound up with an idea, and I kind of followed it through to a to its somewhat bizarre conclusion. And in doing so, I'm going to combine um, working with Groovy, with accessing a RESTful web service, with storing data in a Mongo database, with serving up the results later, either using Rat Pack or actually I'm going to focus on Grails in this case. I've noticed there have been several Mongo talks, pardon me, several uh, Rat Pack talks so far. So I have some slides on it and I did use uh, Rat Pack a little bit, but given the time considerations instead, I've noticed there haven't been a lot of talks on the, the new RESTful capabilities inside of Grails. And that turns out to be remarkably easy to use. So I'll show you that instead. Uh, again, all the slides will ultimately be made available through, um, I mean, I'll send them to Sean or whatever framework he sets up to use them. And then they'll be available to anybody whenever you want to see them. Uh, I'm just looking for my pointer here. Yep, still got a few people wandering in. So I'll give them a moment. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. That ought to be enough. I mean, after all, you, you already know how to write bad grails, right? That's the other talk going on. <laughs> and if you weren't in the first LEGO Mindstorms 1, why go to the second LEGO Mindstorms 1? And, uh, and of course, well, I can't say nobody uses desktop apps, can I? And Andres would be very upset. So, okay, if you got to go see Andres, I get it. So, at any rate. It would be nice to say if you're special. Ah, very good. I mean, I have noticed among the desktop Groovy slash Java people, they are a small but very vocal minority. Yes, very vocal. And hey, if I ever, I got to be honest, if I have to do a desktop app again, I'm using Griffin. I mean, no question. You know, it's really nice stuff. Uh, okay, now, let me give you the story behind this. And I will confess, now, I got to say this. There's, there's an attempts at humor in here. And, and what do they say that a comic says funny things and a comedian says things funny? And, of course, that makes me a software developer, you know. <laughs> so I'll do what I can do. But, I mean, don't expect wonderful gags here. I'll lower expectations a little bit. But nevertheless, this all started because I was wandering in Barnes & Noble one day, and I noticed that there was one bookshelf, only one, labeled computer. And then when I wandered over, there were three, actually, two or more labeled teen paranormal romance. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. So I could either lament the decline of Western civilization or I could put some groovy vampires in my book, see, and use that as a marketing tool to try to sell more copies. So if you look at Twilight, for example, it was a New York Times number one bestseller. It was the biggest selling book in 2008, for example, over 22 million. Uh, it was made into a very boring major motion picture. I actually did plan to watch it as preparation for this talk, and I just couldn't do it. I, you know, <laughs> I'll try again, but I don't know. I heard the book isn't that bad, but boy, that movie is, you know, all right. And I just, the idea of vampires that sparkle, just, all right, moving on. This is my book, uh, Making Java Groovy. It's a Java Groovy integration book. It's... Um, you know, looks at things that Java developers normally do and tries to see how you can add Groovy to make your life easier. One of those things is working with NoSQL databases. One of those things is working with RESTful web services. So I had a whole bunch of things in here that I figured I could use. Now, New York Times so far has kind of ignored it. I'm, you know, I've still got my hopes, but nothing yet. Uh, the reviews at Amazon have been very good. That part's true. And in fact, the book was nominated for a Jolt Award which, of course, it turns out you just, there's a form to fill out on the website. <laughs> I mean, I figured, why not, right? You know, they accepted the nomination, so, you know. Uh, but I haven't heard anything yet. I'll let you know. Um, so clearly what my book needed was groovy vampires. So I decided I would try to take care of that. Now, my first thought was, is I'll go to IMDb 
and see if the Internet Movie Database and see if they have a RESTful API. And they really don't have much of anything. Or if they do, I couldn't find anything useful. But it turns out that there's the Rotten Tomatoes website where they do movie reviews and everything. Yeah, they could do reviews there, and they have both critics' reviews and audience reviews, and uh, they keep scores and all of that. And, of course, if it's above 50%, it doesn't look like a rotten tomato. If it's below, it does. It's all awful. But they have a RESTful API. Now, unfortunately, you can only do GET requests. They can't do a post, put, and delete. I was really hoping to post some reviews or something, you know, so I could do a full RESTful web service, but very few public West, publicly available RESTful services support anything other than GET, you know, because they don't want to deal with transactions. They don't want to deal with the security. I understand that. You still have to register and get a key here, and I actually have the website available just to show you. Uh, right here is the Rotten Tomatoes website. Now, this is not Rotten Tomatoes. This is developer.rottentomatoes. And I've already signed in on my account and everything. And they have what they call a dynamic documentation set. There's a regular set of documentation, and there's the dynamic documentation. And with the dynamic documentation, there's my key if you want to copy that down really fast. You know, of course, it's going to be on video now. Oh, well. Uh, you see that each of these is a, is a link. And they're all JSON links. They all end in .json. So we're going to talk more about REST as we go. But for those of you who are familiar with it, of course, one of the principles of REST is content negotiation, where the client supplies some mechanism for saying what content they want. And normally, these days, that's done through an accept header in the request. But here, they've wired it into the URL. And they only support JSON. There's no other content type they can have. So be it. And if I went down to the query down here, movie search, this is the URL for it, and you can put in your query, and I'll put in something like vampire. And if you hit the try it button, you get a lot of information. First of all, they show you the full URL, which is good. And I got a 200 OK, which is reassuring. Now, the content type on the response I specified was text slash JavaScript, but I believe it's because they're rendering it in this page. I'm getting back application slash JSON. I'm, I'm almost certain. I'll show you that later because I'm going to use JSON as well, Google's JSON, to convert the JSON data into some object tree, which is not a trivial operation as it turned out. So I'll show you that as well. But this is the sort of response you get back. And I, is that magnified big enough? Can you see that in the back? So you see that it has a total, it's 319 movies, and then movies is a nested JSON object, ID, title, year, MPA, rating. Release dates, here's the critics rating and the audience rating, synopsis. They don't all have all of these fields, of course. There's my abridged cast. And if you go down, this is the interesting part. You see the section that says links. And there's a self-link, an alternate, etc. This is the hypermedia part that the REST people are so excited about. You know, the, the four principles of REST, and I've got them in the slides. And, you know, one is you have an addressable resource, and there's my addressable resources. And Two is that you've got the uniform interface, the HTTP verbs, get, post, put, delete, maybe options or trace, etc., maybe a patch. Three is the content negotiation, which you just saw. And this is four, is the hypermedia, that if you go to a REST advocate with a list of URLs and say, would you check out my REST API, you've already lost them. Okay, They're, you're doing it wrong, as they would say. Uh, by the way, do you know what REST advocates call themselves? It's appalling. I didn't make this joke up. Restafarians. <laughs> I'm telling you. And that's way more sense of humor than you'd expect out of these people, seriously. You know? But if you go to one of these people with a list of URIs, you've lost them because that's brittle and everything. They want you to have the first URL, and then in the response, it says where you can go from there, and maybe even the methods and everything. Well, in this particular case, you see that in an each individual movie, they have a little links block. Now, in the Java world, where they have JAX-RS, this would be known as a structural link because it's embedded in the response, as opposed to a transitional link, which would be in the headers. They didn't use headers here. They used the response, as you can see, so that the client does have to know the structure of the response in order to get to those links. They have to know how to parse it. That raises the bar on writing a client. But they are there, and they're reasonably understandable and everything. And the other place they use hypermedia, if I scroll down to the bottom here, is that you see they also have a link to the current page. This says page limit of 10 and page 1. And then they have a next link for the next page. And if I went on, you'd see a previous link as well. So they use the hypermedia stuff in two areas, one to get additional information about a movie, and one to actually do pagination. 
So I have to process that. But hey, you know, then I can make my Rastafarian friends happy by actually using hypermedia, you know, and so be it. So at any rate, that's the API that I'm going to work with here. Now, whoop, uh, right here. So again, get requests only. And there's the page. And here's your four principles in REST. The addressable resources has the form of a URL for each individual resource, whatever it might be. In this case, it's a collection of movies, but it could be each individual movie and the cast and everything. And then the uniform interface, well, again, in this case, we only have get requests. Uh, Grails, which I'm going to show you later, starting in 2.3 and above, has actual uh, mechanisms built in for get, post, put, and delete. Actually, they have that even in the early versions of Grails, but there have been massive improvements in the REST support in 2.3 and above. In this application, I'm going to show you I'm using 2.4. Uh, which is my first time of using 2.4. I've been stuck. I've been waiting and working with 2.2 because most of my clients are. But I'll show you some 2.4 stuff here. There's the content negotiation again. Rotten Tomatoes only supports JSON requests and responses. The content type is hardwired in the URL rather than putting it in an accept header or, uh, and or using a, another mechanism like that. And then this is the hypermedia as the engine of application state. As, I've, as I always, often call it, an unpronounceable acronym that has the word hate embedded right in it, you know? <laughs> I mean, when we're all moving on to the next thing in a few years, we'll look back at this and go, really? We picked something that had hate in it, you know? Uh, but okay, um, even the rest of Farians have given up on trying to pronounce that thing, and they just refer to it as hypermedia now. So I'll do the same. But in this case, in the one I'm working with, I have self links and next links and even previous links, although in my case I didn't really need it. My goal now is to do the query through Groovy, grab the JSON data, and go through it page by page, pull out the data, and then save it somewhere, persist it, and then I'll serve it up myself through an alternative server-based mechanism, in this case Grails. Although I'll talk about Rat Pack a little bit as well. Now to, to do an example, I went and searched for Blazing Saddles, and of course Groovy has a, the, the Groovy JDK makes doing get requests absolutely trivial. You put in a URL, you go dot to URL because the string class in Groovy has been enhanced to have a to URL method which returns an instance of java.net.url and dot, and the URL class has been enhanced to have a get text method which of course you refer to as just dot text and that does the automatic Groovy conversion to the get text method and then it works. So in this case, I also need a query string. So if I'm going to build the URL, it's not just a base URL. I also have a query string. And here's a mechanism I use for this all the time. I tend to make a map. So I have a map here of keys and values. Key 1 is value 1. Key 2 is value 2. You run it through a collect to basically return a list where key comma value has been turned into key equals value. Now, in fact, there's a simpler form of this I'll get to later, but after I get back that list, I join them with an ampersand, and I built a query string. You can actually use a little bit of groovy metaprogramming and add this to map as a method. I'll have a to QS method, something like that, and can automatically convert it. Now, in this, what I might have to consider sometimes, and what I often do in reality, is that the keys and the values probably have to run them through a URL encoder in case they have spaces or something that can't go through uh, a URL itself, you know, apostrophes or whatever, but that's a small variation on this process. Very straightforward. So I'm going to show you that. So here is my actual one for Blazing Saddles. Now I'm using IntelliJ here, and for my Blazing Saddles .groovy one, let me make it a little smaller. Actually, is that? Can you read that? Okay. So I'm importing the Groovy.json package and. I have, I took my key and, you know, since I know I'm presenting it in a public forum, I put it in a file, okay? This, by the way, all this code, this part here, is in my book source code repository. It's all in GitHub uh, under the Making Java Groovy repository, and I'll give you a link to that later. The Grails app I have not yet committed. I was still tweaking it, playing around with it, but I'll put it up there as well. At any rate, so I put my API key in a file, and this grabs the key out of it, and then the base URL is the one that ends in the question mark, so I'm going to movies.json. And then here is my map. API key is the key I just read in. The query, remember they just want a queue. So I do an encode on blazing saddles under UTF-8. Now this is the shortcut. It's collective it. I, I wrote on the slide key comma value maps to key equals value. And Paul King, who, by the way, co-author on Groovy in Action, let's just simplify life. Everything Paul King says is right. 
Okay, that's just that's its default for me. That's how I go at it. He pointed out to me, of course, the two string method on map dot entry is key equals value. So all I have to really say is collect it, and it gives me key equals value. And then again, I join them with an ampersand, and that builds my query string. So I'll echo out the actual URL, the base plus the, and then appended the query string on it. And I have here JSON output dot pretty print so you can see the result. So let me actually comment this part out at the moment. And I'll uncomment that so you can see what the process looks like. And if I execute this, uh, this script right now, just run this blazing saddles one. Uh, yes, I've got my little plug in to get me to use the keyboard shortcuts instead of that. Then it's going out to blazing to a uh, rotten tomatoes and you can see I got my full response here. There's total one movie and it's blazing saddles, etc. and there's the posters and the abridged cast and all that information and I could even follow that to get the detailed cast if I wanted to. So that's how simple it is in Groovy to make a get request. Now if I want to do post put or delete, I use a library like everybody else. I tend to use the HTTP Builder library, which is a groovy wrapper wrapped around HTTP client from Apache. Uh, some people have mixed results with it. I found it to be reasonably good. The documentation is somewhat lacking, but if you go to GitHub and look at the test cases, they'll show you pretty much how they intended for it to be used. So there's some documentation that way. But of course, here I'm only going to do the GET request. So moving on. If I come back to the slides here, there was the key file, there's the base URL, there's the conversion into a query string, here's the full URL, and then finally there was the output using JSON output static pretty print method. The only thing I got to criticize, by the way, about the pretty print method in JSON output is it doesn't print. <laughs> it formats, then you have to print, which is not intuitive, okay? Sorry, but nevertheless, you know, I mean, I suppose I should raise an issue, right? Yeah. I can make another contribution and break the build again, man. You know, all right. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I did. I made a contribution to Groovy, which I was really excited about and broke the build in the process. And I didn't know you could feel thrilled and horrified at the same time. <laughs> and you don't. It turns out you flip-flop back and forth really, really fast. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, gee, oh but cool. Oh, man. You know, it was amazing. I don't want to do that again. Okay. <laughs> Inside there, there's the link collection with self and alternate and everything because, of course, the reason I picked Blazing Saddles is, oh, and there's the pagination link as well, is that, of course, I wanted Mongo. You know, Mongo only pawn in Game of Life, life the peak of the Alex Karras oeuvre, if you will. So I needed to grab that one. And what I did, if you uh, actually let me show you in the script here, is that that's what the rest of this is for. If I go back here and uncomment the rest, you see what I did is I took that URL.toURL.txt and I ran it through JSON Slurper's parse text method. When I was originally using JSON Slurper, they didn't have a bunch of overloads in the parse method like, like uh, XML Slurper does, but now they do. But nevertheless, since I already retrieved the data in text form, let me do a parse text. And then you could treat this in Groovy like it was a set of maps, really, maps with lists and strings in them. So I went down to the zeroth movie, the first movie there, and I did a JSON slurper.parse text of movie.links.cast so that I could go in and grab the full cast one. This is following, I guess I'm doing hypermedia by hand, if you will. Uh, throwing in my API key as well, and I could print out all the cast members, and then I could actually do all cast.cast.find, and you could do a finder to see that Mongo is in fact in there. So if I run this again, this time using my keyboard shortcut so my plugin doesn't complain at me, then what you'll see is there are the characters that came from the cast with characters ID and name, and uh, I wound up finding that there was Mongo and, and he's in there. I didn't wind up printing him, but before I had it as an assert, it's in there uh, somewhere. Uh, yeah, there's Mongo right there, which of course inevitably leads us to Mongo database, right? I mean, the idea is, is that all my data is in JSON form, and Mongo's perfect for this. There's the, the home page. There's the website for MongoDB, and it's document-based. In other words, it stores JSON data. Their native format is what they call BSON, binary JSON, and yes, I like to call it JSON and not JSON. 
I like picturing a guy with a hockey mask and a machete while I'm working with this stuff. You know, it just works for me. Uh, call it what you will. At any rate, it's open source. It's got full indexing. It's got search capabilities all in JavaScript. And there's a Java API, which is kind of ugly. And then there's a groovy wrapper which is the other benefit to doing this. So since, because my first thought was, is, oh, I grabbed this JSON data, now I want to persist it somewhere, and I start looking at mapping this to relational, and it started getting ugly fast. And then I thought, wait a minute, if I just use a Mongo database, persistence becomes trivial. So first of all, I don't think I started my server, my Mongo server yet. So I have it on this machine. I just type MongoD, and the daemon is currently running, and it's on port 1527. I think I can magnify that a little bit. So this is just the one I got from a brew install onto a Mac. And it's nothing, I'm not trying to scale it or anything. I just want to have a database available. And then the client program is called Bongo. And when you start that up, there's a show databases command to see what your databases are. Then you can use one. And then there are collections inside it. So you have a database, which is a collection basically of trees you know, JSON trees, if you will, and inside a collection, then you can go to the collection, in this case mine will be called Vampire Movies, and do a dot find and retrieve whatever information you want. Just to demonstrate that, if I open up another tab and I go Mongo here and I'm it's show databases, as I said, then I have several, and if I use Movies and I say Show Collections, and there's, I have other movies and vampire movies. And if I did, say, db.othermovies.find, I will get all of them. And I only have one. In fact, it's Blazing Saddles. That's where I'm going to put it. So I don't need to do it again, but I'll show you the script of how I wound up adding that in. So there is a Java driver available for MongoDB. And there's Java docs and everything. And it's just the, the, the overly complex, wordy, awkward Java that we've known to grow and love all these years. I, it's like I you know, try to explain to my son it's that the, my wife has endearing characteristics. They're not annoying. It's endearing. See? You know, again, Java, we, we like it. It's, it works out really well. Moving on. <laughs> they have this class called Basic DB Object. Yeah, he never, he's never gotten that idea of if mommy's not happy, nobody's happy. I try to explain. <laughs> But what if I'm not happy? Okay, you're not happy, you know, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, we have a basic DB object which extends a linked hash map. Oh, that's intuitive. Okay. <laughs> but at any rate, that's the class in the Java API. Now, this actually is the GMongo project, which is a really nice demonstration of a feature in Groovy which uses AST transformations. This was, a, it's a relatively dated project, I'm afraid. I think I have it here. This is the GMongo project at the, its GitHub repository. And it hasn't been updated. It was created in 2010. It's been updated uh, not for a couple of years, actually. But it's still available. It still works. And what's interesting about it, uh, sorry, uh, other way. There, I could confuse you all sooner or later, is that it uses the at delegate annotation. The at delegate AST transformation. Because it turns out inside the Java API, the Java driver, there's a class called Mongo. And what they did in the Groovy driver is say, oh, let's just make gmongo delegate to Mongo, and then a few other things to clean up the interface. And that's more or less the whole thing. So what at delegate does, if you haven't used it before, at delegate is used for composition. You take the public methods out of the contained object and expose them through the container. So I could invoke whatever method I would have invoked on Mongo, I can invoke on gmongo, and it passes it through and it returns whatever comes back. Extremely useful when you're trying to replace inheritance with composition. So you don't have to extend anything, they just wrap it. And as I say, the rest of the API is largely clean up things necessary to make the API just look nice and make it work better. So I figured, great, I'll use that. Now, Side point, uh, I did finally convince my local Barnes & Noble to carry a couple copies of my book briefly. And it's buried. I mean, you know, it doesn't exactly catch your eye, right? I mean, it's, it's sitting in the middle there. And of course, I need to market it better. So we're moving toward the groovy vampires part so that I can comfortably move it over to the teen paranormal romance section, see? <laughs> yeah. OK, so how am I going to populate this Mongo database? So what I do is I'm going to do a get request at Rotten Tomatoes. 
and then parse those results into JSON objects, and then all you have to do to add to a Mongo database when you have JSON is a simple append, which in Groovy is a left shift. You just left shift the whole collection onto this collection object in Mongo, and you're finished. I mean, it's that simple. But then, of course, I have to do the pagination stuff because I'm only getting 10 at a time. So here is the, the individual steps. I'll go through them here, but then I'll show you the script. So I do that same get request, this time with a query being vampire, and I parse the results using the JSON slurper so that now I actually have uh, maps, if you will. And then I just go into the JSON object and grab just the movies itself and append them to the collection, the, the, the vampire movies collection. And if that vampire movies collection doesn't exist, by the way, this will create it. And then I just have a while loop, which says as long as, you know, I start up, I mean, this is maybe the one time in the last 10 years that I really could have used a do while loop. And you may be aware that's basically the only Java construct that doesn't work in Groovy. It's like, that's where they drew the line. Sorry, we're not supporting do while loop. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, uh, but here, so I, I get the next link right off the first one and while there is a next link I traverse to it I parse that text go to url.txt append the movies and see if there's another one and round and round we go and I don't have to count how many or anything like that as long as the response has a next link in it I can traverse it and append all the movies there uh, by the way in my book I do actually have groovy vampires in there so I'm not pretending that you know if I move it over to the other section it really is there it's not false advertising here uh, so looking at the script itself this time in the script I have my populate mongodb from rotten tomatoes script here and in this case I instantiate my gmongo class that's all that's necessary the gradle build file has the dependency on gmongo in it and then I get the database called movies and drop that, that collection, get the slurper ready, grab my key, go ahead and get the initial, you know, do the collect to build up the URL, print out the URL, slurp the thing, grab the movies, and then here's my next, and there's the while loop, and I walk all the way through and count them at the bottom. And I'm not going to do that right now. I've already done it. As it turns out, there's, I think, 319 of them, something like that, which, you know, so it takes not a long time, but a little bit of time, and I don't know given the network in here and everything, you know, but I could run right through it and I wind up with everything exactly where it says. So now, then, by the way, and just to, just to show you over here, if I say uh, show, uh, let's see, wait a minute, db.vampiremovies.find, this is a JavaScript API, this interactive console. They'll give me the first 20 or so and then they say type it to get the next 20. But you can see each of these has an object ID. That's a Mongo thing. They assign an object-based identifier to it. But then there's a bridge cast and an ID and links and MPA ratings. And yet several of them have missing fields. Now Mongo's a schemaless database. I don't have to have all the fields in there at all. They did put in the fields. They just left them blank, although sometimes they're not there. This becomes an issue when you're trying to map to classes. Okay. So, but at any rate, I could do my queries right at this level in JavaScript if I wanted to. So the first thought was, is I want to map this to classes. And if you use a mapper like JSON, then it can be done, but it's a little awkward. I have a little script here that I want to show you. Let me make this a little bigger. And to make this easier to understand, here is the uh, Blazing Saddles JSON file. So there is the actual data that I'm trying to map. And of course, this really brings home the difference between a dynamic language, a dynamically typed language like Groovy or Clojure or whatever, and a weakly typed language like JSON. I mean, at least Groovy uses classes. You know, you really have types if you want them. Groovy's optionally typed. JSON, all I have are strings, man, you know, <laughs> and maybe some numbers and some sub-objects and lists. And that's it. I, there's no meaning to any of these things. So you have to supply your own meaning if you're going to map them to classes. So you see I have some root JSON object with a total and then the movies collection. And then I have this links right here with the self-link because I only got one movie in this case. And the link template to show what the link looks like. Search term and results per page and page number and everything. Now the way you would use a tool like JSON is that you would build classes that map that have attributes 
that use these actual words. And then the words will be what connects the two things together. So over here in my JSON to JSON map, I started off, I just called it response. And there's that total, there's a collection of movies, and I made a class called links. And there's the link template, and you can see this is the kind of awkwardness you're forced into if you want the automatic mapping rather than doing it by hand. Is that there is a links element in the JSON here at the bottom, and it has a map inside it, you know, a key value pair. So I need a class called this or something like this which has a map in it. I can't just drill down. If I can drill down, if I do it by hand, it's only if I want to automate this process that it gets to be a little awkward. So um, here is the, the, link, the, the links here, and I made that one. And then this one I played around with, and I decided I am going to do like a, an enum for the MPA rating, etc. And if you just walk your way down, I put all the classes in here just to make it easy. And then all I do is instantiate JSON and invoke the from JSON method pull in that data and say I want a response object out of it. And assuming you got the mapping in a way that it understands, it works fine. It just walks the whole way through. And I, I actually printed this object. Now to show you before I print it, uh, I add, oh, just, I, you can see it. I added the two string annotation on each of these just so when I execute this guy, you can see the, uh, the generated to string method from the AST transformation. There's my response, and it's blazing saddles, and there's the rating, and on and on, all the way through. You know, manageable, just not necessarily what I want on this. So that's one way to do it. An alternative is you could do a manual mapping. And in that case, what I did is I made classes called movie and cast member and MPA rating and the rating representing the, the evaluation ratings, the review ratings, not the MPA rating for the audience and the critics. And I put a static method in my movie class called from JSON. So here, if I go to, now this is not the same movie class. This is the, I put it in a different package, pardon me. So here is my entities and here's movie and you can see now I've got all these pieces and I put in a from JSON method and then I could do my conversions like let's convert that to a long and there's the title and this is an integer and here's my switch statement for the ratings to get the enum in there and sometimes runtime is empty so I need to Elvis it against a zero I like using Elvis as a verb, by the way. I always, you know, work with that. So I just did, if it's not zero, use it. Otherwise, put in zero. And sometimes it's an empty string, and this will take care of that. And on and on, I just work my way through building it myself. And then I put in my two-string method up here, and that's what you saw the results of as well. Was Actually, that was a different two-string method. But that works too. Okay. Uh, so see, now I, I moved it over, and I took a picture. It's sitting in the you know, <laughs> teen paranormal romance section. There's the there's some of the Twilight books down here and various other vampire books, which I, you know, I don't really know. I have a, not a huge fan of those. So, uh, but then I left it there and I went on my travels and I figured I'd come back in a month and see if it was still there, you know. Okay, moving on. So now I want to serve up the data locally. And as I say, I did build a Rat Pack app and I, I don't want to go into that now because, as I say, you've got lots of other talks on Rat Pack. But there's the website. is ratpack.io. It's beautifully asynchronous based on Netty. It has Java 8 support. I'm running Java 8 right now for all the things I'm doing. Uh, it's got dependency injection via Juice, although I don't, I'm not using that in my app. I worked with uh, Peter Ledbrook's Lazy Bones project in order to make the app. All you have to do is say, Lazy Bones, create Rat Pack in the name of the app. And you could change directory into it and edit it, and it all comes out fine. I made a little vampire server. Uh, I could, I guess, I should have called it Crypt or something. I didn't really think about that one. You know, I need a better name. But the server wraps the G Mongo instance, and then just pulls the data out of the database and serves it up. So think of it like a DAO for JSON data, if you will. And it maps the methods to HTTP verbs. That's the other beauty of Rat Pack is that you could put in handlers for get, post, put, and delete right in the in the Rat Pack script. It works very nicely. Uh, so I use a get handler in ratpack.groovy and return the movie instances. And, and I also have tests in there, Spock tests for ratpack, both just the thing by itself as well as the integration spec to make sure it's all working. And 
again, if we had another hour, I would get into that. But let me skip that right now. I will make the source code available. Instead, I'm going to go to Grails. But as my divider here, I, I, was, I planned to go back into Barnes & Noble when I got back. And I figured I'd take a Post-it note. I'd say, you know, Groovy Vampires, page 220, and put it on the book and see if that would help it sell, you know. Mm -hmm. And I went in and I went over to the, the uh, teen paranormal romance section and it was gone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my goodness, did somebody actually buy this thing? So I went over to the info desk and they knew me by then because I'm always like, did anybody buy the book? You know, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, cause, and they, they look it up in the system. I didn't tell them, by the way, that I moved it over to the teen paranormal romance section. I didn't know how they'd feel about that. And nope, there's still two in the, in the building somewhere. You know, Somebody moved it. So hoist by my own petard, if you will. You know, I thought, well, maybe I'll take the other copy and move it there. To, no, that's probably not a good idea. So at any rate, I had the plan anyway. Uh, moving on. Here's how do I serve this up using Grail's really cool rest capabilities now. Now, Grails has added in Grails 2.3 and above an annotation called at resource. And at resource will allow you to actually generate a controller from your domain class without writing any code at all. You don't have to write the controller at all. So I made a movie class. In fact, I took most of the classes I wrote for my entity mapping and I just made them domain classes in Grails, although I had to do some tweaking. I'll show you that in a minute. But I, in this case, I don't need an explicit controller because this really is just a, you know, a, a web-driven database, really. I'm just trying to serve up the data through URLs, if you will. So I also went in the URL mapping. So here, by the way, is the Grails application. And this is under Grails 2.4.1. So here again is my movie domain class. Now, I'm getting to this in the slides, but let me show you the fact that I'm using it with Mongo requires certain additions from the Mongo plugin. Now, before I get to that, here's my resource annotation. For some reason, the resource defaults to XML. If you don't specify the content type you want back, it'll try XML first. And of course, it's rendering it using its own internal XML renderers. So it's not like I could say, don't give me XML. So instead, by putting in formats equals JSON first, I could go JSON comma XML. That way, it'll use the JSON renderer before it uses the XML renderer. It'll prefer that one. Now, of course, the content type header from the request ought to specify. But nevertheless, by adding this in, I wound up with the type I wanted. And also here, here is my URL mappings. I added this line here to say slash movies resource says. There's a resource and a resource says. If you have only one and only one, you could do resource. But I have a whole collection. So I said resources, and this is the domain class it's going to. So just doing that actually gives me an awful lot of power. If I go to, uh, this is my shell where I actually have the, uh, the, group, the Grails Vampires application re ready. If I now say Grails at this level, and I'm really I'm going to run it through IntelliJ, but I just want to show you something here using the interactive console. Uh, another thing, oh, and by the way, I have to use 2.4 if I'm using Groovy. Pardon me, let's say it this way. Since I'm running Java 1.8, I need to use Grails 2.4 because that includes the first version of Groovy that supports Java 1.8. So that's why all these layers are in here. So at any rate, if I now say URL mappings report, I don't know if you've seen this, then it will look at that file. It'll look at the URL mappings, and it will generate a nice little output here. There's the traditional mapping. There's the error that goes to slash error. There's the assets mapping that's built in from that plugin, dbdoc built in for that plugin, and then here is my set of RESTful APIs that map to the individual actions inside of the generated controller. So you can actually see that if I do a get to movies, I'm like calling the index action. If I do a get to movie slash create, I'm doing a create action. Oh, that's a little odd. I'd rather do the post to movies to do a save. See what I mean? And then there's puts and there's, they use patch for a partial update and deletes down here for deletes. If I do get with an ID, that also is a show for that ID. Now for a normal relational database, I may actually know the IDs or may know that they're consecutive or something. In Mongo, of course, that goes out the window because the IDs are these object IDs and they're very hard to follow. But you can always get this URL mappings report and how cool is that? You know, very nice there. 
So let me get out of that, and instead I'll run it inside of IntelliJ. Uh, but actually, before I get it started, let me tell you about, well, there's the rest of it. There's the resource. There's the formats being JSON. Here's the URL mappings report, and there's the output that you get out of it. Uh, then I, I throw in a subtitle here. You think that works? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, you know, still a better love story than Twilight. Uh, I've got a couple other subtitles coming later, you know. At least I'm only using them as dividers. I mean, give me that much. So, at any rate, Grails has a MongoDB plugin inside, or available. So I went to the website and I installed the MongoDB plugin using the normal mechanism of pasting in the compile string inside of build config. So if I look over here at build config, then here, in fact, is my MongoDB plugin added to this. Now, IntelliJ is very, very good about this. As soon as you paste in a string like that, it goes, wait a minute, your dependencies are out of date. Should I refresh them? And you say yes, and it downloads the plugin immediately. And now I have all of those classes available at compile time, meaning available in the rest of my system. In fact, what I'm hoping to do with this, and I just didn't do it yet, is I could actually then build a service that goes to Rotten Tomatoes and downloads whatever movies you want and adds them to the database. It's just that at the moment I just wanted the vampire movies and I already had them in the database. So I'm just exposing them that way. So that leads me to how am I going to do this mapping? Now, to work with Mongo database, you have to add a class called object ID and make your ID of that type. Now, in a, all the examples you're going to see online are the real trivial examples where you have a JSON object which is one level with like three or four fields and they don't really get into it. What if you've got level after level after level? Now, the documentation does talk about that, but there aren't a lot of good examples. It turns out, first of all, you put in this static map with field to say you're using Mongo in each of the classes. And then here's the, here's the part that makes it all work. I want the top level movie to be the one with the ID, and then the rest of it are all what we would think of in, in relational as embedded objects. They're just extra objects that share the same primary key as the movie. They're just parts of it. Now, I could rewrite this so that I could give those independent keys and find ways to query them, but my plan is simply to query for movies based on their properties. Like you do the dynamic finders in GORM, I'm going to show you a with criteria command, etc. And that's how I'm doing the queries. So what I did is I started at the top level with movie, and then for each of the child JSON objects, I made an embedded element in there and wrote a class for those that do not have object IDs in them. So then the other thing I did is in the data source.groovy, you tell Mongo, I mean tell Grails where to find your Mongo installation. It may not have been strictly necessary in my case because it was all local, but this is the same mechanism you would use for a remote Mongo database. You'd put in your URL to the remote server, and I didn't need a username and password on any of this, but you could add that as well. There's my port name, and this way I could go directly to the proper database, and I'm all set. It's remarkable how easy it was to do the simple stuff. The, the complicated stuff threw, threw us a bit, but the simple stuff was really easy. So here is, uh, well here for example, let me, before I show you the query, here is movie inside here and you can see there's my import of the BSON type with the object ID and I'm working my way down dates, ratings, strings, posters, movie links. I know it feels uncomfortable using S's on those but I really want to distinguish it from the real classes and then here's my map width and then I made all these pieces embedded. There's my posters, links, ratings, release data, bridge cast. Bridge cast was a has many. Just decided to set that up separately. And then you can also put this in, I don't know that it was strictly necessary after doing the deep database, the data source mapping, but it didn't hurt anything. I said this one goes to the movies database in the vampire movies collection and I don't have a version key, you know, which is something I always forget to say. Uh, but if I go to cast member here, for example, you'll see that this has just ID and name, map with Mongo. This has has many characters, but those are strings. That's the embedded one as well. And again, all of those follow the same pattern. All the nested ones that just have the embedded mechanism in it. So to illustrate that after doing this, how easy it is to use GORM in this case, then I actually made a script here. Let me do what I would normally do, and I will start up the what the, says Groovy console, but of course we know is the Grails console. 
The Grails console allows you to play around with your uh, domain objects because it mocks all the dynamic finders and everything. And since GORM has been rewritten to support NoSQL databases, this works just as nicely with the Mongo ones as it would with Redis, Neo4j, any of the others as well. And let me get my script ready while I'm waiting for that so that I can just tape it, paste it in there. So let me copy this. And here is my script. And I'll paste it in. And let me make this bigger so you can see it. So I did a with criteria call on movie. And if you've ever done this with domain objects, regular domain objects, since ratings is a child element, is a has many on movie, I could just say the word ratings to make a nested query. And I'm saying, give me all the movies that have a critic score greater than or equal to 50. I'm just leaving out the optional parentheses here. And I'll order them by critic score dot descending. And I had to do it because I'm outside the ratings block. I had to traverse the, the map to get to that. And I only want the top 10. I'm basically saying, what are the top 10 critic score movies in this collection? And then for each one, I'll print out the score and the title. And when I execute this, uh, these are the results I get. And there's a 100. I, I'm just blown away by that one. I might actually have to watch that or something, you know. And there's the various ratings, and you can see these in here. And the only criticism I have is I don't see Buffy in there anywhere. And, you know, yeah. got to have Buffy in there, right? Uh, and, of course, uh, the each method returns the collection, and I put in a two-string method on movie just return the title. That's why you're seeing that big block at the bottom. This is the actual output I want. But notice that with this mapping and with this plugin, I have GORM. I mean, I have the dynamic finders. I have the with queries, all of it. So I can check, well, all right, maybe I don't want critic score. Let's look at audience score. And I'll order by audience score. Now, I do need to know, again, I do need to have an attribute named critics underscore score, or I have to do some additional mapping somehow. This was just much easier was to go with what the database had. Um, I'd order them by audience score, but maybe I won't. So audience score... And you know what I'll do is I'll put, uh, let's put some parentheses in here. I'll do the audience score, comma, dollar m dot ratings dot critic score as well. And then the title after that. And by the way, you notice I could put curly braces around this whole thing. But because it's just invoking getter methods on the way down, it turns out I don't need it. Now, I wasn't sure I didn't need it, but if I'd gotten any error whatsoever, I just would have put the braces back in. You know, I don't try to diagnose stuff like that. I just, I know what I did. And you see a lot of them, they don't have any, the ones that the audience liked, the critics didn't rate. <laughs> so go figure. Because a minus one is a critic score that's, that's not in there at all. Uh, so Kung Fu Vampire Buster, or I mean, you know, <laughs> hey, I did a query on Star Trek once, and there was a movie called Star Trek versus Batman, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me! And the summary was like, the Enterprise goes back to 1960s Gotham and is taken over by the Joker and Catwoman, and I, I have got to watch this. I think it's on YouTube actually, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. But at any rate, this is how easy it is to do, to serve it up now. And the other thing, of course, is by putting in the at resource on there, now I can go back here and say something like, let me make this a, a little bigger again, is I can do a curl request. So let me clear here. Oh, i got to start my app. So I didn't start the server before. Let me start Grails Vampires. Now, while that's starting up, the problem I had was the enum, because they had ratings of PG-13, and of course you can't have a dash or NC-17, and the normal mechanism of mapping enums that works with Hibernate, it works with Grails, did not work with this. And Jeff Brown and I were sitting around trying to figure this out, and what we pretty much determined is it's an issue in the Mongo plugin or the driver or something like that. It's not Grails. It's the Mongo plugin has issues, and I know a lot of clients who are using Mongo heavily, and they warned me I'd run into all kinds of issues event, you know, with this thing, depending on how hard you push it. At any rate, I don't want to browse to this link, because I don't have that kind of controller. But I can go here and say curl, uh, put in the header here of um, ex accept header. I don't even know if I need this because I'm already using it. Uh, is application slash JSON. And then I can put in the localhost 8080 slash grails vampires slash movies. And there's my JSON data popping right out. Now, I could also put in 
slash ID, but you know, what are my IDs, right? Now I can go back to my Groovy console here and say instead of printing out the values, let me just print out, uh, let me take this out and just print out uh, $m.id. And you can see these are what IDs look like inside of Mongo. So if I grab that and go back to curl here, I could paste it in. And there's just that movie. So the RESTful API is working. Now, I didn't try to do an insert or post, put, or delete, but I have no reason to think they wouldn't work. I mean, this mechanism, I have you worked with relational databases, and as long as the mapping works, this tends to work just fine. And you see how easy it is to throw together a very simple server. I imagine when Grails 3 comes out, this will be even easier. Very simple. Okay, so back to the slides here. All right. Uh, again, nobody bought the book in the, that section, so maybe vampire fans just aren't into Groovy. I don't know. I didn't get to put my post-it note, so I thought maybe I'd try this. Uh, groovy soup for the chicken soul. That didn't quite work, you know. So I was thinking maybe that one, uh, the Westeros edition, you win or you throw a Groovyless code exception. And I thought, nah, that's probably better if I do Hodor, 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 you know. Um, didn't get as many laughs as I was hoping for, but so be it. <laughs> so I used the REST API at Rotten Tomatoes. I did the GET request, got back the JSON data, stored it in a Mongo database. All this stuff is actually practical. I just had a silly application for it. The Groovy JDK made the GET request trivial. I was able to follow the hypermedia links in order to, to get the, the, the cast as well as the pagination. I was able to use the GMongo project in order to have access to the Mongo database through my, both through Groovy and through Grails, because indirectly that I think is supporting that. Use the, the GMongo project uses that cool at delegate annotation to implement it. Uh, Rat Pack, the pr biggest problem I have with Rat Pack right now is the lack of documentation. Hint, hint, you know, but I mean, it, it's a wonderful project. It shows all kinds of promise, but as soon as I do anything slightly different, I get lost and I need help because the documentation is just, well, shall we say, isn't there yet. I know this is my golden opportunity to contrib contribute, right? Pardon me? Right. The only way I got it working at all was looking at the Java docs. That's true. I did use the Java doc and the Groovy docs, you know, uh, very helpful there. And I also had Dan Wood's email address, which also helped. But, you know, any rate, uh, mechanisms there. But it's, it looks very promising. Then I went to the Grail stuff with the REST controller. There is a class called REST controller you can extend if you want to customize all this stuff as well. Use the mappings and the plugin, and then I had to end on this. Okay, that got more of a chuckle than the others, I'm hoping. And that's what I have. Thank you very much for coming.